I put down the details of all of their backstory, you know, even down to their um, you know, first boyfriend, first time they had sex, scars they've had, hospital trips, their blood type, their favorite food, their favorite color, like kind of really get a sense of this whole being of, of kind of a mm. three dimensional character. And there's quite extensive backstory. Welcome to this Bastard Q&A for After Love. We are joined this evening by writer director Aleem Khan and actor Joanna Scanlon. Welcome. After Love is, is a character study of this woman who is going through a very kind of um, specific kind of moment in her life. She's just lost her husband and she discovers this huge secret. And so, you know, it's, it's, a, it's an exploration of grief and reconciliation in many ways. I guess one of the questions at the very beginning of the whole journey was wanting to explore this idea of kind of duality and looking at like the multiple faces that we wear, the multiple skins that we live in and, and how we change those skins as we kind of move through our life. And there's something about that kind of, that question of, you know, how, how, we, um, how we can be multiple things at once. And uh, so that, that was kind of the initial kind of question. And I wanted to, I thought that'd be a really rich, uh, question to kind of set within the context of a very long marriage and th this idea of you know the people who who we're closest to can also be strangers the people that we've lived our whole lives with we, we can you know never fully know some you know everything about them so that was um that was like really central um for me and I guess my mum was absolutely you know a really important um inspiration for me for the film um being a kind of muslim convert herself um the character of mary is very much uh modeled on her you know my mom kind of created the structure the kind of the skeleton to kind of base the character on and you know like like i was saying about um us having many layers you know mary's religion is a layer of her but it's not mm. all of her obviously and I think in cinema, when we see Muslim characters, it's quite basic. Like, you know, they're, they're often, I, I do feel like representation of Muslims on screen and in the media in general is, you know, they're either, they're kind of polar opposites. They're, they're either kind of sports heroes or they're terrorists. And I wanted to create a space for a character like Mary, someone like my mum, and see that represented on screen um, the kind of full complexities of, of a person, of a woman of a certain age, of certain size, who is Muslim. When I first read it, I had an image of something much more naturalistic and kitchen sinky, actually, mm. because there are lots of domestic kind of references. And I think that took me into this thinking that it was going to be out of a sort of school of British realism, British real, realism yeah. film. Um, and actually that is not what Aleem was going for at all, as you can see with the end result. And so that was really interesting that it wasn't actually about doing things in a supernaturalistic way. And that actually the pulling back into pure kind of stillness, if you like, or not really giving very much away, just doing the, the action, but very minimal actions like, one cup of tea or whatever it might be, one tea bag in a cup, meaning quite a lot, was um, very different from how I imagined it would be. Mm -hmm. It's just immersion uh, in something where the words might, might be there or they might not be there, but you are just in the state of being uh, of that character in that moment. I really liked, I loved that. And I had met Aleem's mum, Fozzie as well, and we talked a lot about her life and her feelings um, and her faith. And there were all those things that I would consider sort of almost a research side of, of the character. Mm. Um, and then just having to trust that's there in, in playing a moment within, a, you know, within the scenes. So that the preparation is probably where most of that comes from and then using whatever's happening at the time I mean it was quite a lonely role to play mm. because she's on her very much in the French house you know and in France um it's 
she's really on her own. And so using that feeling of loneliness and, uh, and just being isolated and separate, which was a real thing, mm. um, as well as part of our story and as well as everything else and just, uh, just having to feel it. When I'm writing, I, I kind of develop very kind of quite extensive backstories and I kind of break and I do it for myself obviously to start with because I'm, I want to obviously know the characters so I'm I kind of break down each character in a kind of psychological sociological and physiological kind of pages and I, I put down the details of all of their backstory you know even down to their um you know first boyfriend first time they had sex scars they've had hospital trips their blood type their favorite food their favorite color like kind of really get a sense of this whole being of kind of a three dimensional mm. character and there's quite extensive backstory um and so I gave that to Joanna and to to Natalie who plays Genevieve and to Talid and to Ahmed uh, and Nasser who plays Ahmed and all the main characters had that and so obviously uh, what, what what Joanna or what the other actors do with that is totally for them I mean everyone has their own process on how in how they ingest that um did, but did they see each other's backstory I shared, that's a good question. I shared um, Ahmed's uh, with Joanna because it's okay. a whole, uh, sorry, mm. with, with Joanna, sorry, Nasser's, yeah. yeah. Ahmed's <laughs> with Ned because they've spent their whole lives together. And I had shared um, Solomon uh, with uh, Genevieve, mm. but not the, not the others. Mm. Um, yeah. When, when I was writing, there was a, um, I wrote quite a lot of the sound into the screenplay um, because really it was being in the location it was being in dover and being on the white cliffs um and the sound of what that environment feels like um created a lot of kind of ideas for story in a way um you know in dover there is this kind of you know the winds and the waves and and the birds are constantly changing you know mm -hmm. But the thing that is kind of constant there is the, um, the ferries and that it creates this kind of low level hum that's a bit like a kind of earthquake uh, kind of rumbling, you know, and it's almost like the heartbeat of that landscape. And there was something about the layering of the sound there that really, I guess, I just thought there was um, an opportunity to not even an opportunity it just felt like it was necessary because I knew I was setting the film in Dover and in Calais to to have those elements as part of I guess represent or be expressions of the character mm. uh, the characters so you know and the story is about this woman's kind of internal world kind of falling apart and she's going into a world in Calais where the physical home and world of another woman is falling apart and so this kind of cracking this kind of rumbling we used um Yoko and I you know talked a lot about having this um this kind of rumble throughout the film we worked with a really fantastic costume designer called Niraj Maraj and um he's an, a wonderful Australian Indian designer and we've worked together before and he had a very specific eye and a very specific um idea of how he wanted to uh, express Mary's again Mary's kind of um place in the film and obviously the, the colors in Dover and in Calais on, on the cliff the colors are green white and blue and these colors are very um we use uh he used these colors for all of um all of the characters they're all wearing blue or green or white mm. and it was, a, it was a way of the characters kind of referencing the landscape because the landscape is a character in the film you know these two these two kind of um mirrored kind of landscapes of Dover and Calais facing one another they are characters they represent the two women themselves in a way mm.